So we're just going to run through some of the features of the Sonoscape E1 uh, that will enable you to get a good image uh, and a clear image. Uh, so we'll just bring up a, an image here. You can see it's quite dark here. So the first thing you need to do is really work on getting the black and white sorted so you can get a nice clear image. First line of attack is using the gain buttons here that will allow us to bring in some more whites. You can see it changes here as you push the dials across. Now, as you change these dials, it'll bring in more whites or blacks, depending on which way you go, up high or down low. So in this situation here, we'll probably want more whites up at the top because we're doing more of a superficial image and we want more blacks here, so it blacks that out. We've got quite a white screen there, so we can just change that a little bit with the gain. We can either get more whites by changing the gain or we can turn that down and you can see we can get a better picture again by using the gain. The frequency button allows us to change the frequency of the probe. The lower the frequency, the deeper you're trying to image, the more superficial image will require a higher frequency. So we can change that frequency by using this dial and you'll see as we change that dial, it changes the frequency. So this probe has a frequency of 5.5 megahertz all the way down to 3.5. This is a superficial image, so going to a higher frequency is probably appropriate in this situation. As we change that, we may want to change the gain again to bring that image. Another option we have is this gray map function here. Again, this is just a generic button that will globally change grayscales on the screen. And it's a case of just experimenting depending on what you're imaging to get the right type of uh, black, black and white image. Moving on, we have depth of screen. So we can adjust at what depth we are wanting to look at. So you can see it's, it actually increases and improves the size of that image. This isn't a zoom, this is telling the machine to picture deeper down. So this is going to give us a much better image here, although you do lose a bit of clarity. So it's a little bit of juggling around again, of trying to play with the blacks and the whites. The focus point allows us to change where the machine is actually going to focus the main beam. So you can see it's dropping down. Here we start getting into the zone of where we're imaging, if that's what we're wanting to image right there. The pointer will allow us to highlight to patients what we're looking at rather than using fingers. That's a nice easy way to show patients what they are in fact looking at. The next feature is the zoom feature, which is just here. The zoom is what it says, is it zooms in. So you'll see that we've lost a little bit of the position of the image. We can use a trackball just to move the image back in. To the main area of the screen. We do tend to lose a little bit of clarity once we use zoom, so you're probably better off to use a depth to get a bigger screen. And again, once again here, you might need to use a bit of the play around with some of the gains just to bring in and out the blacks and the whites to get a clearer picture. To return back to your normal screen, just press the B button and that will return us to the original screen. Okay. Uh, next we want to look at is frequency. So the frequency allows us to uh, dictate the depth of the image we're trying to go. The shallower the image that we need, the higher the frequency. So you can see the numbers just dial through here. This probe goes up to a frequency of 5.5 and goes down to a frequency of 3.5 and you'll see the numbers tick here, and it'll also change the image there. Um, gray map is another feature that you can try and use. Again, it will just change, you'll see the numbers dial through there, it'll just change the grays that appear on the screen. And you just pick one that's going to work best for you. So next thing we're gonna run through are some measurement functions of the Sonoscape V1.
First one is the caliper. Caliper will bring up a simple uh, two-dimensional measurement that you can use on a live screen. Simply press the caliper to bring up the initial measure. Press the set button, which will pin the first point. Press the second time, and you'll see a measurement come up on the screen there. As I said, this is a live screen. I'll just press B to clear the screen. This is a live screen, which means that you can measure on a live image, which is useful if you are wanting to measure the rise and fall of the pelvic floor. So in a situation like that, understanding this is not a pelvic floor image, you would ask the patient to relax, place the measure point on the first aspect of the pelvic floor, get them to contract, and that will should hopefully then see some sort of a rise, and you can measure that and get them to relax again. That will give you the measurement of that rise and fall of the pelvic floor. We'll press B just to clear that screen. We now can actually measure the volumes of bladder, which made it useful for measuring uh, urine pre and post voiding. Press the count button here and that will bring up a selection. You may need to choose the urological preset, which if we go back, you'll see there's a number of applications here, abdominal, gynecological, obstetrics, etc. The majority of applications will be abdominal, the pelvic floor and bladder measurements will use urological. Select that. Next, we'll select bladder, which we'll see here, and that will then bring up three measurements that's gonna ask us to be able to create a three-dimensional image and therefore a volume. This situation with this image here, we will just use one image. The user will understand how to image a bladder to measure these, uh, measure the volume. Measuring a first, move to length, and we'll get the measurement and we'll simply go from end to end. Next one is height, like that. Typically you'll then have to change the position of the probe and that will give you a third measurement. And that will give us the volume of described here in centimetres cubed, which equates to millilitres. I'm just going to press the B button to clear that. 